this coming week is going to be a very busy week for so many people. Uh, it's going to be a week in which people are scrambling to prepare themselves for family coming over, prepare themselves for get-togethers, do the last-minute shopping as they buy gifts and get ready to exchange gifts. But not only that, there will be institutions that will be very busy this coming week preparing for the 25th, especially because the 25th, Christmas, will fall on Sunday this year. And so there will be many things going on this coming Sunday of next week in a special remembrance of Jesus. Many churches will be having their Christmas programs next Sunday. There will be all kinds of things going on to honor Christ, to glorify Him, to magnify Him. A lot of talk about Jesus is going on this time of the year. People will be involved in plays and skits, and there will be manger scenes. In fact, some have a live nativity, a drive through live nativity, in which you could drive through in your car, and you can see the actors acting out the nativity somehow. So you could drive, and you can see that, of course, at the end of the block or the end of the drive through they're going to ask for money. They're going to ask for a donation for that. But it's free. And they're going to have a lot of songs about Christ. A lot of songs about Jesus, the birth of Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Many of those songs will be going on, especially next Sunday. Especially in remembrance of His birth. And you hear a lot about keep Christ in Christmas. There's a lot of, in, in our society among those who are conservative thinkers who will say we need to keep Christ in Christmas. And you'll even hear this phrase, Jesus is the reason for the season. There is a commercial that comes on TV. I believe it's um, perhaps some sort of banking commercial. Anyway, he says at the end of that commercial, remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. And he goes off. And so many people will say that Jesus is the reason for the season. And you'll have Christmas lights that say, Happy Birthday, Jesus. This is an actual picture of a yard, of somebody's yard, in which they are celebrating Jesus and His birth. And you will also have birthday cake. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jesus. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you who come from the churches of men know exactly what I'm talking about. You've eaten some of this birthday cake for Jesus on December 25th. Probably saying happy birthday to Jesus on December 25th. You may have seen these bumper stickers, some of them magnetic, some of them are on cars. Keep Christ in Christmas. No Christ, no Christmas. No Christ, no Christmas. And of course, this one is very popular. You see this one, a magnetic one I've seen around Rockwall. Keep Christ in Christmas. With all of this talk about it, Surely it must be in the Bible. I mean, Jesus is in the Bible. Surely there must be something in the Bible that indicates the birth of Christ is something that was celebrated and a command from the Lord in which we are to do that very thing. Here are all the passages on the subject of Christmas in the Bible. None. You would think with all of the, the things that are going on this week and all the things that's going to happen next week in these churches, the, the time, the thousands of dollars that's going to be spent on the costumes, the plays, 
the concerts, the carolers, the robes, the lighting. And some will even have communion on that day. They don't normally have communion every Sunday, but that day they're going to have it because it's December 25th. You would think there was something in the Bible about that. There's not one. Not one. Here are all the passages on the subject of celebrating the birth of Christ. None. There was only one celebration of the birth of Christ. When he was born, what did the angels do? They praised God. They worshiped God with the the shepherds when they announced to the shepherds the good news of glad tidings. You read about that in Luke. And there was a chorus of angels singing peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That was the actual event of the birth. But since the night of that birth, there's nothing. In the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you don't read anywhere where anyone threw a party for Jesus while he was on earth, his birthday. You don't read anywhere where Jesus even took time to acknowledge his birthday. Now, did he? I'm sure he did. That was not a part of his teaching. That was not a part of anything of his life in which he said, this you do. Do this to celebrate me, to honor me, to respect me. So where did it come from? If it's not in the Bible, it's not in the New Testament, there's only one celebration, the actual event of Christmas. When it actu- I mean, excuse me, the actual event of the birth of Christ, which some people call the first Christmas. It's not called that in the Bible. The actual event of the birth of Christ in which there was celebration. But since then, no celebration. Jesus did not celebrate, we see, anywhere explicitly told in the Bible. And when the church began in Acts chapter 2, throughout the rest of the book of Acts, you don't find one celebration of the birth of Jesus among the apostles and prophets. And then we come to the New Testament writings, the totality of it, 27 books. Nothing. The way people are acting this week and next week, this time next week, you would think it's on every other page of the New Testament. At least mentioned once. But it's not there. The true origin of Christmas. Here is a quote from a denominational commentary, the Wycliffe Bible Commentary. The exact date of Jesus' birth is unknown. The legendary date of December 25th cannot be traced back farther than the 4th century. That's the 300s. That's 270 years after the church was already established. And this commentator, denominational commentator, says when Jesus was born is unknown. We don't know when it happened. In fact, most scholars will will tell you, based upon the evidence in Luke, because the shepherds were out in the field, it would not be in December. Most likely in the spring. But certainly not in the winter months. Our winter corresponds with their winter over there. They wouldn't have shepherds out there in the nighttime. It's a cold and rainy season this time of year. So here is a denominational commentary making it very plain. It's unknown. The legendary date of December 25th, it only goes back to the 300s. We know that the Bible plainly teaches that the church would fall away. In fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, Paul tells Timothy, Now the Spirit expressly says, verse 1, that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. There would be a falling away. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about that falling away that would happen the apostasy or falling away, which culminates in the man of sin, the son of perdition, which I believe from history is referring to the papacy. It's referring to the Roman Catholic Church. And there is other passages that talk about people are going to bring in things, fables, myths, 
and incorporate it into their teaching and claim it's from God. And that's exactly what we find when we come to Christmas being celebrated as a day that honors Christ's birth. The Cyclopedia of Ecclesiastical Literature, McClintock and Strong, Volume 2, page 276. The observance of Christmas is not of divine appointment, nor is it of New Testament origin. The day of Christ's birth cannot be ascertained from the New Testament or indeed from any other source. The church fathers of the first three centuries do not speak of any special observance of the nativity or birth of Christ. This is a scholarly work here by a scholarly people who are respected among pretty much every denominational group, McClintock and Strong. And they admit it's not of a divine appointment. You can't get it from the New Testament. It's not of New Testament origin. You cannot, uh, uh, the day of Christ's birth cannot be ascertained from the New Testament. This is a very strong admission that this did not come from the New Testament sources. Christmas is not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. There is no record of Christmas anywhere in the Bible. Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 3, page 724. Now that's a strong and very powerful admission from the Catholics. Christmas is not among the earliest festivals of the church. Well, if it didn't come from the time of the New Testament when the apostles and prophets were speaking and wrote it, then it's not from God. It's not from God. Clement of Alexandria, from 150 to 216 A.D. is when he lived, mentioned several speculations on the uh, date of Christ's birth and condemned them as superstitious. So even in the early stages, after the New Testament was written, and this period would be after the New Testament writings, my laser is going out, that means that no one knew in those early stages, right after the, the time of the New Testament writings were complete, which would be around 100 A.D., no one knew when Christ was born. If they didn't know, and they lived very close to the time of Christ, how could people say today they know? It has a pagan background. It has a pagan background. The Encyclopedia Britannica, the traditional customs connected with Christmas, had developed from several sources as a result of the coincidence of celebration of the birth of Christ with the pagan agricultural and solar observations at midwinter. In the Roman world, the Saturnalia, December 17th, was a time of merrymaking and an exchange of gifts. December 25th was also regarded as the birth date of the Iranian mystery god, Mithra, the son of righteousness. S-U-N, of righteousness. So we see the pagan background and the time of this pagan god being born in which the church incorporated that. And when you study history, when the church fell, a, fell away and became worldly, and these things that Paul predicted in 1 Timothy chapter 4 started coming to pass, they started incorporating pagan activities and say, okay, this is the birth of the mystery god Mithra, December 25th. Let's change it and make it the birthday of Jesus. That's where it came from. The apostate church took December 25th from the pagans and turned it into the birthday of Christ. The truth is Jesus is not the reason for the season. Paganism is. Yet people teach their children to say, Happy birthday, Jesus, on Christmas Day. And even when a denominational preacher will admit, and I've heard them in sermons admit, that we don't know exactly when Jesus was born. 
This is something that we do to honor Him. Something that we do to glorify Him. We'll have more to say about that in just a moment. It was incorporated into the Catholic Church. And therefore it has a Catholic background. Think about the word Christmas. Christ Mass. It's the Mass of Christ. Mass is the communion of the Catholic Church in which they take the Eucharist, the Mass, the Christ Mass. That's where the word Christmas comes from. Look at this listing of Catholic holidays. Here's the interesting thing. Your faithful Catholic will try their very best to celebrate all of these things on the calendar. But then you have denominations, the Protestant and Evangelical, who will just pick out two. They'll pick out two Catholic holidays and focus in on those holidays. Easter Sunday and Christmas. And make those religious holidays. But what they're doing is they're taking out of a list of the major Catholic holidays, two of their holidays, and celebrating themselves. It is the residue of Catholicism that's brought over into Protestant and evangelical denominations. And if you pointed this out to people, they would not even realize it. Again, the way people talk, you would think it was in the Bible. But it's not. And therefore, the Catholic Church is the reason why we have this perpetuated into the mindset of so many people and so many Americans and so many people around the world that this is something special that honors Jesus. We are not authorized to observe His birth. We have no authority to do that at all. We must have authority for all that we do. Colossians 3 and verse 17, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That means I have to have, putting it in modern vernacular, I have to have book, chapter, and verse for everything I do. And I don't have book, chapter, and verse for celebrating the birthday of Jesus. I don't have that. I don't have it from the words of Jesus. I don't have it from anything found in the other books of the New Testament. Don't have it. In 2 John and verse 9, 2 John, John warns us about something here. <clears throat> 2 John, verse 9, whoever transgresses, 2 John, verse 9, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now, in the doctrine of Christ, do we find Christmas? No. If we don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, we don't have God. In the doctrine of Christ, we do not have any kind of celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Therefore, any kind of celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ is not of God. And if I engage in it, I'm not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, and I don't have God. This is how serious this is. If we don't remain with the teaching of God, we don't have God. But yet people think they're honoring God when they do this. They think they're glorifying Christ. They think He is pleased with this. Where is the authority for celebrating His birth? That could be a good question that you ask your relatives or co-workers your friends who think that this is something very special that honors Jesus. Where in the Bible, where is this taught? Where do we go to? Could you show me a passage where the early church, the book of Acts records the first 30 years of the church, where the church ever celebrated this? It's simply not there. We are taught to observe Christ's death every first day of the week. The focus is on the death of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, when He instituted the Lord's Supper, He said, do this in remembrance of Me. Surely Jesus knows how He wants to be remembered. And He says, this is what you do. You take the bread, the unleavened bread, this is My body. You take the fruit of the vine, this is My blood. 
You do it every first day of the week. Not once a year, not twice a year, every first day of the week. Again, it amazes me that people who are religious who will talk about the Bible, and they'll go to Bible passages next week and talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. That same Bible teaches you take the Lord's Supper every first day of the week, yet they don't do that. In Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, we see the early church coming together. Here is the celebration. Here is the remembrance of Christ that the early church engaged in. Acts 20 and verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, When the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message unto midnight. It was the breaking of bread that the disciples came together for upon the first day of the week. That's when they did it. Every week has a first day. And we know it was a weekly practice because 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 and 2, upon the first day of every week, you lay by something in store. You give upon the first day of every week. So it was weekly every week to remember him in a special way. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Here is the divine memorial to Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning in verse 23. We do this every first day of the week. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this... In remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, or do this, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. That's what Jesus wanted us to focus on. His death. Not his birth. Was his birth important? Sure. Without that birth, there couldn't be a death. We understand that. But what did Jesus say to remember me by? What do you focus on? What event in my life I want you to remember and I want you to do it every first day of the week? My death. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Only Matthew and Luke record the birth of Jesus. All four gospel accounts record the death and the resurrection of Jesus. You see where the emphasis is? Mark and John don't even talk about the the events concerning the birth of Christ. But all of them focus on his death, his resurrection from the dead. There is the emphasis and there is where our emphasis should be as well. Christmas, from heaven or from men, Jesus... His authority was challenged by the religious leaders. By what authority do you do these things? In Matthew chapter 21, verses 24 through 25, Jesus answered and said to them, I will ask you one thing. I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where is it from? From heaven or from men? And that's the question we need to ask for every religious activity. Is it from heaven? Is it from God? Do we have authority for it? Or is it from men? Celebrating Christmas as the birthday of Christ is from men. That's not from God. Nowhere. And that's the very simple test that we should always be using when we come across a religious activity. Is it from heaven? Or is it from men? Christmas as the birthday of Christ is from men. Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Here is the danger in doing something to honor God that he has not authorized. Here is the danger. Nadab and Abihu. You see, we are all priests unto God. There's only one high priest, Jesus. Under the new covenant, every Christian is a priest. So we function in the capacity as a priest within the church to offer up, as James said in his prayer, spiritual sacrifices unto God. And we need to do it according to truth. In John 3, 24, uh, we're to worship God in spirit and in truth, according to God's will. Nadab and Abihu here offer up incense unto God, but they did it in an unauthorized manner. Now, Nadab and Abihu, this is from the English Standard Version. 
The sons of Aaron each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord has said. Among those who come near, I will be sanctified, and before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Here are the two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. You think about that from a parental standpoint. You love your children. God knew Nadab and Abihu were the sons of Aaron. God knew that Aaron loved his sons. Yet, in honor to God, they did something that was unauthorized, and it was something that God had not commanded. And God killed them. Moses said, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to be sanctified or held up as holy before all the people. I'm going to be glorified. And so when people try to glorify God by doing the things that they do on Christmas, which is not from God, he had not commanded it, it brings about spiritual death. It's not just a bad idea. It's sinful. It's wrong. Because it's not authorized by God. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. Here, Moses is talking about the people going into the land. And he says, When the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abomination to the Lord which he hates, they have done to their gods, for they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Here's a principle. You know, Romans 15 and verse 4 tells us, We learn from the Old Testament. We can learn the lesson from Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus 10. And we need to learn learn the lesson here. He's saying when you go into the land and after they're destroyed, you do not inquire after their gods, after their religion, and say, how did these nations serve their gods? I want to do the same thing as they did. You're not to worship God the way they worship their gods. But that's exactly what... The church did when it fell away and it incorporated in December 25th as the birthday of Christ. How did they celebrate the birth of their God? Well, that's how we will celebrate the birth of Jesus. We have no authority to do that. And we've already seen how Christ wants us to remember Him. We're not to be like the religions around about us. We're to be sanctified. We're to be set apart. Now, having said all that, what about the custom of celebrating Christmas in a non-religious way? As an American tradition, it falls within the realm of Romans chapter 14, whether a person wants to do that or not. Because there's nothing religious about it. We have a Christmas tree, we have gifts, we have ornaments on our tree, There is nothing that indicates that it's religious in any shape, form, or fashion. In fact, the track that's up there that that I, I received from house to house, heart to heart, is a very good study on how to make the difference. And there's some more of them next to the door. So be sure and pick that up if you don't have one of those. There is a distinction there between celebrating it in a way that's non religious and celebrating it as a religious holiday. We have no authority to celebrate it in any way, shape, form, or fashion in a religious manner. But if we were celebrated, keeping things in perspective, according to the American tradition, exchanging gifts and things of that nature, we are not falling into the mistake of celebrating it 
as a religious event. It's the same thing with several things that we do in our life. For example, I might say, I'll see you on Thursday. By saying that, am I honoring the God Thor? No. But you know Thursday came from Thor? Thor's day? That's the origin of that name. Thor's day. But I'm not honoring Thor as a God or glorifying him if I say, I'll see you on Thursday. And we have a lot of things in our language that derives itself from idolatry or things of the past but have really no religious connection whatsoever at all. And we use it in a non-religious sense. Another thing before we close. Even though we understand as God's people, and a lot of these lessons are not new to you, that this is something we should not do to celebrate or honor Christ. It does not honor Him because it's not according to his will. This is an opportunity for us. Because the subject will come up at work or with a neighbor or with the uh, family member to talk to them. Let's go to the Bible and let's see what the Bible says about truly honoring him and what he says about his plan of salvation, what he says about his church, what he says about worship. Here is an opportunity in which people are thinking about Jesus to show them the real Jesus of the Bible. First and foremost with our example. As we stated this morning, we're going to have services just like normal next week. We hope that you will be here and I hope if you have any friends or relatives that are with you to invite them to come and worship with us. There are so many things that people do that they think is from the scriptures. Think is from the word of God, but it simply is not. We need to not get caught up in the hype, but get into the Word of God and see what truly God wants for His people and what truly honors Jesus. If you're not a Christian, believe in Christ. Confess He is the Son of God. Repent of all your sins and be baptized. You're baptized into His death and you're raised up from the waters of baptism like He was raised up. Again, the focus is on the death and resurrection of Christ even in water baptism. If you have done that, gone astray, we urge you to repent and come back to the Lord. As always, the choice is yours. While we stand and while we sing.